Lexington, Kentucky, the horse capital of the world. Travel a mile outside the city in any direction and you'll see why it's called that. There's Keeneland, the Kentucky Horse Park, and wait for it. How many horse farms do you think there are around Lexington? Mm, about 100. Probably like, yeah, 100. Probably 50. Five. <laughs> mm, 30. How many horse farms do you think are in Lexington? Uh, if I had to guess, I would say about 300. Believe it or not, there are over 450 horse farms in the Lexington area. But those horse farms, the horse park in Keeneland, that's where the story ends. It begins here in the city on Race Street. Lexington has a rich history of horse racing. This area was once home to the oldest turf organization in America, the Kentucky Association, an organization to promote the breeding and racing of thoroughbred horses. There's a mile-long dirt race track, a grandstand, and stables. One of the oldest races in the country, the Phoenix Stakes, began right here in 1831. Thousands of people would come to watch the races, but in the mid-1800s, guess who were most of the jockeys? They were slaves. We often think of slavery in terms of people working in fields and on crop farms, but in the horse racing world, it was slaves who were often the people taking care of the horses, training them, and racing them. It seems strange that out of that dark past would come America's first celebrated athletes. This is the African Cemetery Number 2 in Lexington, just a few blocks away from Race Street. This area was supposed to be purchased and used as a cemetery in 1869, a cemetery primarily for black people. There are over 5,000 graves here, but only 600 markers. That means that there are over 4,000 people here who do not have a name. As it turns out, there are a few of those celebrated jockeys buried here, including this one. This is where Oliver Lewis is buried. Mr. Lewis was the first person to win the Kentucky Derby. In fact, 13 of the 15 riders in the first derby were African American, and 15 of the first 28 derbies were won by black jockeys. Black jockeys were a major presence in the horse racing world, and in the late 1800s, the best of them all was Isaac Burns Murphy. Murphy won the derby three times and had a 44% winning percentage in all races. He was the highest paid athlete of the 19th century, and when he passed away, he was buried here, and then he was moved. This is the Kentucky Horse Park, the only park in the world dedicated to our relationship with horses. Horses, of course, have been part of most human cultures throughout history. Even some of the earliest cave paintings show horses. This area began as a farm and was sold from one family to another for 200 years. In 1972, Mary Edwards was the owner and sold it to the Commonwealth of Kentucky to become the Kentucky Horse Park. And it is here we find the final resting place of Isaac Murphy, as well as the one widely considered the greatest racehorse of all time, Man of War. Our little walk through history brings us back to today. The tradition of horse racing that began at Race Street and the Kentucky Association is alive and well at the horse park, Keeneland, the Red Mile, and all those 450 horse farms in the area. The Kentucky Derby itself is just an hour away, but when you look at all that history and compare it to the horse racing world today, there is something missing. It's time to celebrate them. Time to honor and remind the world that African Americans had an important role in the history of horses in our country that the horse racing world simply would not be where it is today without them.